My name is Mr. Shengoma, and today we are going to look at a few questions about functions. Okay, so here we have question number one, and um, it says you have got two functions. One is this function of f, and then another one is function of g. So for question A, we are supposed to solve the function of f. So on the place of x, we are given negative 1. So we shall have to substitute negative 1 inside our, inside our x, like that. And then we work it out. So we keep negative 1 in the brackets. We close the bracket. And then we keep the power, then minus three, then you open bracket, you keep minus one, then you keep the power again. Then uh, plus six, then you open the bracket, you keep minus one, you close the bracket, and then you keep minus four outside. And that gives us uh, negative, negative 14. So according to number one, we shall end up with negative 14. Okay, when you come to B, it means you get F and you keep it inside of inside of G. So this is our G there. In order to get F, so on the place of X, I keep the F. So my F is this. Minus four and then outside minus one. So I have to open the bracket, I get 2x cubed minus 6x squared plus 12x, then minus 8 minus 1. Then I simplify these two here, and my final answer becomes 2x cubed minus 6x squared plus 12x, and then it becomes minus 9. So this is the final answer. Remember, the function which is near to the bracket is the one that will always go inside the next function. Not the next one to go inside the one which is uh, near the bracket. Inverse. So I need to do the inverse of gx. Always we said um, gx is equal to y. Any function is always equal to y. So remove gx, substitute with the function of gx. We get that. Then after getting that, we said you have to make, um, you have to exchange x and y. And then after exchanging x and y, you make y the subject, like that. Hence, we get our g inverse as x plus 1 over 2. OK, we go to question number 2. We are given in the bracket f of minus 1. So we shall have to substitute the x and we keep minus 1. So this will become um, 8. The next we have to do the inverse of f. So we know um, fx is always equal to y. So substitute f. Keep 5 minus 3x is equal to y. Exchange x and y. So 5 minus 3y is equal to x. Then make y the subject. So we get this minus 5, then divide by minus 3, divide by minus 3. So the inverse for x will be x minus five divided by minus three. Okay, next, find f, if we already we said when a function is multiplying its own inverse, right? The final answer will be the original domain. So according to this, straight away, our answer will be eight because our domain given is eight. Whenever a function multiplies its own inverse, even if I have um, g inverse g of 2, my final answer will be 2. If I have h, h inverse of x, my final answer will be, will be x. That's what um, uh, a function times its own inverse means. Okay. Then we go to question number 3. We go to question number 3. We have got function of x is equal to tan x, and uh, here we have got 45. So it means here we need to find tan of 45. So you get your calculator and find 
tan of 45. And according to tan of 45, it is 1. Okay, here, you have to solve the G. The answer you get, you keep it in F. So when I'm solve the G of 87, I will get 2 times 87, then plus 6. 2 times 87, then I plus on 6. That gives me 180. So meaning for F of 180, it will mean I do tan of 180. So for the tan of 180, it takes me to zero. So it means here the answer, final answer will be zero. Right. Next, I have to get F and I keep it inside the inverse of G. So this means first I have to know what is the inverse of G. Okay, so I have to find the inverse of G first so that, I, because I need to use the inverse of G. So first I find the inverse of G. Okay, like that, and make one Y the subject next. So two Y is equal to X plus six. So over two, over two. So this will become our inverse. So I have to get the FX and I have to put it inside the inverse of, of G. But remember, my fx is tan x. But my inverse now is x plus 6 over 2. My inverse is x plus 6 over, over 2. Okay. So if x plus 6 over 2, Okay, sorry, it is x plus 6 over 2. I wrote x minus 6. Thank you. Here, plus 6. So if that is the plus, it means uh, I have to, uh, the inverse will be minus now, because in the question it was plus, like that. Right, so we move on. So I have to get um, this, and it goes inside of, inside of the inverse of G. So it will become now tan x minus 6 over 2. And that is our final answer because now we have got uh, g inverse and then fx inside of g, g inverse. So our answer would be um, tan x minus 6, everything over, over 2. Okay, then we move to the next part. We move to the next part. That is number number 4. In number four, it's telling us for the functions which we have, we have three functions here for fx, for gx, and for hx. For fx, for gx, and for hx. So let's start with A. A says find the value of fg of six. So, meaning, first I get the value of g of six. And that will be three over six plus one. And that will be a half plus one. And that is one and a half as the answer. So this one and a half or 1.5 becomes the bracket of F. And we shall have two times 1.5 for F. And that gives us three minus one to give us two. So our final answer will become a two. Right. Then after getting that, we go to part B. Write as a single fraction. So meaning they want us to get F and we keep F inside of G. They want us to get F, we keep F inside of G. Right. So when you look at f, f is 2x minus 1. It has to go inside of g. So inside of g, I have 3 over x. So that x will become 2x minus 1, then plus 1. Plus, you stop there. You tell you have put it inside. So that will be our answer. f has gone inside of g. Then we have to find g inverse. OK, so we are finding g inverse, but we know. For any gx is always equal to y. So remove gx, keep the function. And our function for g is plus 1 is equal to y. Then what we do next, we exchange x and y. 
So we shall have 3 over y plus 1 is equal to x. Then we make x the subject. So we have 3 over y is equal to x minus 1. Okay, so we keep over 1 and we do cross multiply. So we shall get 3 is equal to y bracket x minus 1, then divide by x minus 1, divide by x minus 1. We get y alone. So it means our answer will be uh, inverse of g of x will be 3 over x minus 1. As before here we said 3 to x minus 1 plus 1. Okay, we move on to part D. We do h of 3, then h of 3. And remember, our h is 2 power x. So we need to do 2 power x again, 2 power x. So, so h of 3 will mean 2 power 3, that is 8. Then again, we repeat h of 8 because we are repeating h. So it will be 2 power 8. So we need to know what is 2 power 8 and 2 power 8 is 256. So meaning h h of 3 is equal to 256. E. We need to solve E for question 4. There we go. So when you look at E, you do realize that we have got hx and then this side we have got g and the bracket. So first of all, we remove the hx and we keep what is h. Remember, our h here is 2 power x. Now we need to remove the g and substitute this value, this value inside the g. And remember, we have got 3 over um, now minus 24 over 7, then plus 1. So this is what we have now. And we have to find the power. So you can use your calculator and simplify. You can use your calculator and simplify. So 3 divided by 3 divided by open bracket negative 24 over 7 close bracket. This gives you 7 negative 7 over 8. Let's hope that's okay. Hope you are doing it together. So plus one. So you plus one and you get one over eight. So it means I have two power x is equal to one over eight. After you simplify it. Then after that, you do you use the indices approach, indices. Because this side we have the base two. So even this side you have to make the base two. And when I make the base two, when I have eight, that means I will have two to do like this right so i know i have two power three then after knowing i have two power three i have to take the denominator to the numerator it becomes negative three as indices therefore now i know that my x will be negative three because we have to give the same power on both sides right we go to question number five now the inverse first we have to find the inverse of f so we know um, 3x plus 4 is equal to y, 3y plus 4 is equal to x, 3y is equal to x minus 4 over 3 over 3. So that's the inverse. So to find now the in, this 13, I need to put 13 minus 4 over 3. I get 9 over 3 and my final answer would be 3. Okay, I go to Roman 2 f of z but i know i know what is my f my f is 3x plus 4 so remove f keep 3z plus 4 is equal to 20 because we have to keep z on the place of x so i have 3z is equal to uh, 4 will come to subtract this side is equal to 16 for us to go and subtract 20 is equal to 16. Then I have to divide by 3. I have to divide by 3. So I have to do by my calculator 16 divided by 3. It will give me 5, 1 over 3. So my z will be 5, 1 over 3. OK. 
Okay, then I go to the next question that is using a flow diagram, find the inverse. Fine, so I need to do the flow diagram of H. So I start with X, I keep my arrow, keep bracket. I have to say, um, subtract two, then I get uh, X minus two. Then next I divide by five. Then finally I get X minus two divided by five because our function for H is that. So to get the inverse, I have to start with X this side, then divide five, me I multiply five, multiply five from the last one, then I get five X. The next one is subtract two, then me I add two, because we know, then I get five X plus two. We know inverse means the opposite. So uh, we did the flow diagram and then we do the inverse to go in the opposite of the flow diagram. So now the inverse for, for H will be five X plus two. But remember when the question specifies to you that use flow diagram, it means this is what will take more max. More, more max. Why? Because you're following instruction. Right, so thank you for watching. Hope everything went fine. My name is Mr. Shango.